This one kind of looks like R2-D2's cousin that never went to the gym. He has no definition. He's just a block. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today I want to show you guys how to make a puzzle lid. This type of lid is really similar to the last type of lid that we made previously called the cutoff lid. Just like the cutoff type of lid, you are going to have to learn how to make an enclosed form. But once you make that enclosed form, it's all downhill from there. It's actually a fairly easy thing to do. This is one of my favorite types of lidded pieces to make simply because you can pop out so many in such a short amount of time. All you have to do is make a bunch of enclosed forms and then wait until they get to the leather soft to leather stage and cut whatever patterns you want into them. Look here, I even made a zigzag one here. Once I fire this, it'll go right back on just like this in this pattern. Kind of like pieces to a puzzle. This is why I call it the puzzle lid. I'm not gonna lie to you, this type of lid doesn't have an actual name that I can find, so I've been calling it the puzzle lid for like five years. The one drawback that I can find to making these types of lids is that you can't get too complex with the shapes. Once you make a shape, you're pretty much only limited to zigzags and squares. That's my nice way of saying please don't carve inappropriate phallic-like things into this in the classroom, okay? But it's much easier to make this than to make a gallery lid or even a drop-in lid to where you have to make a couple different separate pieces. But this you can make in one day with a sharp knife. The other thing I love about this type of lid is its simplicity. You only need essentially one tool to make this type of thing after you throw the enclosed form. After that, you don't need anything else. Before we get started, you are either going to need a potter's knife, which are specifically designed to cut through clay, especially very soft clay, or you are going to need a very sharp sculptor's knife. Now, I prefer the sculptor's knife because if your clay gets a little bit too leather hard, then it's still easy to cut through that clay body. But the potter's knife should do fine as long as you make sure your clay doesn't dry out too much. Plus, if you go into a store that's not a pottery store and you ask for a tiny knife, they're gonna be like, what? And you're gonna be like, I swear it's for pottery, I swear it's for pottery. And they're gonna be like, yeah, sure, kid, that'll be, that'll be $20. They're still gonna sell it to you. This is one of my favorite types of lids to make simply because it's one of the easier ones to make. After throwing your enclosed form, all you really have to do is carve those zigzag shapes or whatever shapes you want into the clay body, and then it becomes a little puzzle piece as long as you connect the two cut points all the way around to meet the other cut point. But first, we have to make our enclosed form. Potter tip! Right now we're going to try to make an enclosed form, and that enclosed form needs this top portion to come together at the end of this project. That means that the more you flange this out, or the larger this portion up here gets, the more difficult it's going to bring to choke that or color that in later on. So it's a good idea to just take a little bit of water and make sure this top portion is closed in a little bit more than the rest of the body right now. Now some of you will notice that I only did one pull that time, and that's simply because it's a lot easier to choke or color in this top portion here if I'm making it a closed form, if I have a little bit more clay to work with. If it's very thin, it's gonna start to crunkle on me, and I really don't want that. So at this moment, I have one of two options. I can either do one very strong pull, or two very weak pulls, and one clearly saves my time over the other. Potter tip! Notice that I only extended about two-thirds of this clay body, and that's because I need this extra clay to really enclose that form later on. If I messed with this portion up here and I extended it, I wouldn't have enough clay to choke this in later on or color this in later on. It'd be a lot more difficult, and it would take a much more skilled hand, and that's just making the job harder for myself. I know this is really similar to the first Potter tip that I gave you guys, but it's a point that should be driven in very heavily. You really need to save extra clay up here to make an enclosed form in the first place. All too often do I get people who make a really thin portion up here and flange it out way out here and then wonder why they keep failing at an enclosed form. Now this is one of my favorite parts because after you've made your enclosed form, you've essentially trapped all the air inside. So earlier you saw me push this down so that it's a lot more angular. And this is possible only because all the air is trapped inside and the air won't escape. That means that this will technically keep form with the volume inside as long as the air is inside. And you can basically do whatever you want to this as long as it doesn't pop this bubble right here. Because of this, I like to make lots of designs after this phase. You see? All done. We made our enclosed form and we put some extra flavor in there too. Now we just have to wait for this to dry a little bit and get into the leather phase. Day two. Okay, these look like they're dry enough, so we can most likely cut them open now. 
Now the first thing you're probably going to ask yourself is how do I trim this? And you don't really have to trim this, you can just sponge off the bottom if you want. But if you really want to trim this, you best do it now before you end up cutting open an edge. That edge will make it way harder for you to tip it upside down and trim it. Now that you have your enclosed piece and you've already trimmed the bottom to your liking, it's now time to make the puzzle part of your puzzle lid. Once you've gotten all that out of the way, this is the easiest part of how to make this lidded piece. Do you guys remember when we made that cheat mode lid where we pretty much spun this around and made a cut inside the side of it? Well, you're going to do something to that extent, except for this time, you're going to cut whatever shape you want out of this part right here. Now for this part, you are going to need some type of knife. A potter's knife will do, although I will say that I highly recommend something like a little tiny actual knife from a sculptor's kit. This works a lot better, it's a lot smoother of a ride, and if your clay dries out, this will cut through it a lot better than the potter's knife will. The potter's knife is meant to cut through stuff that's more soft than something that's leather hard or even leather. So if you want a smooth ride, go ahead and get you a sharper knife. But if not, go ahead and use that potter's knife and this should do the trick. All you have to do now is cut whatever pattern you want into this. And this is one of the reasons why I call it a puzzle lid. Now I'm just going to cut as much as I want through this body. I can go downwards, I can go over, I can go up. As long as I'm cutting all the way through, and I'm moving all the way around the body of the clay, I should be okay. And after you've cut all the way around, two lines of these sides have met, you can very easily just take this off, like this. You see, now you can take this on and off, just like the pieces of a puzzle. It fits perfectly because you're the one who made this shape right here. Potter tip! After you're done cutting whatever shapes you want to into your jar, make sure you smooth out the top and bottom of the two points where these two meet. This way, it'll allow for a much easier connection whenever you're taking this thing off and putting it back on. Potter tip! Let's say you cut in your designs into the side of this jar right here and you don't exactly get it right and it doesn't slide or stick in any way you want. Or sometimes these little pieces end up sticking into the clay body and not coming off correctly. What you can always do is make a reverse drop in lid by taking this part of the lid off and trimming this down just a little bit. All you have to do is cut off the part that you messed up on by making a little line just like this and taking this part off. Get your trim tool and start trimming the outside going towards the inside of the pot. And the top portion of your lid will fit on there just like a normal top. The only difference is the drop-in part is on the bottom instead of on the top like a normal drop-in lid. I learned this technique because the first couple times that I started doing these puzzle lids, I messed up quite a bit of times actually and I ended up drawing shapes that didn't fit properly into the piece itself. So sooner or later I learned to work with my mistakes instead of throwing away the entire piece. Well thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. At this moment we're still going over lids and these are two different types of lids that you can make extremely easily without all that fuss of making a separate piece to your lid. All you have to do is throw an enclosed form and then you can modify it from there. I really hope these videos are helping you guys out make your lids. I know making lids is a difficult process, but if you know how to throw an enclosed form and you don't want to go through the trouble of making a whole separate piece or a lid or doing all that measuring, this is a way easier way to do it. And so is the puzzle lid if you want to get a little bit creative. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If you want to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. I'm going to call him Snaggletooth.